Up next on Good Taste with Tangie, heavenly kebabs, divine desserts, and out of this world seafood. You know, oh, it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> from a South African chef drawing inspiration from a higher power. To a pit stop where you can get gas, goodies. So you just split that. And darn good brisket. Look at that. All in one place. Plus, a recipe for craveable creamed corn. Then, let's turn up the heat on your cooking skills. Who's the better cook? He is. With lessons from the pros. Time to get your gourmet on. Good taste starts now. everyone, welcome to Good Taste, I'm Tangie Patton. What a view we have here at the Galleria, the largest shopping center in Texas, and one of the best in my opinion. This place is home to hundreds of fine stores, two high-rise hotels, even an ice skating rink. It's also home to one of the most unique dining experiences you'll have in all of Houston. Peli Peli, a little slice of heaven. It's an international fusion of art, light, color, and cuisine. From succulent South African-style seafood, tender Huguenot-influenced filet, and Portuguese espetada, dripping with garlic. It's all about flavors. It's all about putting it together, and nothing's overpowering anything, and you've got so much going on there. You know, oh, so, whoa. yeah. <laughs> Just a small taste of what Chef Paul Friedman has created at his incredible restaurant, Peli Peli, at Houston's Galleria. Every bit of the restaurant is beautiful, but each element really tells a story. Yes, it does. And we want to uh, give people an opportunity and an experience. Uh, every little part of this restaurant has a, has a, a unique character, there's a lot of history behind everything, and it's really, it's, 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 it's so amazing uh, to see the reaction of people when we tell our story. A few years ago, Paul suffered some personal and financial setbacks. He literally knelt down and prayed for help. I said, God, please help me. I don't know what to do. And I, I said, you know what, if you help us build this restaurant, I will dedicate it to you. An investor miraculously appeared on his doorstep and helped fund the restaurant. So much of Pele Pele's art and architecture is rooted in Paul's faith and the memories from his childhood in South Africa. I got to see a whole pride of lions under a tree and uh, they devoured their lunch and I got to see this and I, I knew one day there was going to be something that I was going to be doing that uh, had something to do with that tree and the lions. That tree was an acacia tree, a biblical symbol of strength depicted here in the artwork along with the 12 tribes of Israel. Paul commissioned world-famous performance artist David Garibaldi to create the beautiful paintings. I don't know if you've ever seen him, but he, he paints this picture upside down. And he's amazing. Yeah, and then he turns it the right way up and you're like, oh my goodness, look at that. Yeah, and as you watch it, you really do think, how in the world is this going to be anything? Exactly, And, yes. and it, he's, he's such a gifted Absolutely artist. Amazing. Even the ambient lighting is a work of art, inspired by the South African savanna. What we've done in the main dining room is to try to capture, if you were sitting under an acacia tree and the sun rose and set and then the night came, and so we've, we've made it to where you have an experience of being out in the wild. All combined to create an ethereal dining experience. But it's Peli Peli's amazing fusion of flavors that transport you to another world. If you were describing Peli Peli to someone, the experience you hope they come away with, what would it be? Well, I think there's a misconception of what South African food is. It's certainly not giraffe, hippopotamus, and elephant. <laughs> no. 
So this is the espatada, which is like, uh, it means beef on a, a stick or skewered beef, right? And so on the top of this, I'm gonna put garlic. Oh, and wow. this is just gonna drizzle down, and as you can see it drizzling down like that. And so, what a creation. Oh, and the garlic, I love it. It's, this is a gar all about garlic. Mm -hmm. And so here we have carrot brady, which is uh, my uh, interpretation of a mashed potato. There's carrots, leeks, and Russian potatoes all mashed together after yeah. it's been boiled in a pot. Have a chopped a little cilantro with a little herbs and spices. So, with all these international influences, what's the one key ingredient that brings it all together? I love the combination of flavors. Your food has combinations that I wouldn't have thought of and things you don't see in many other restaurants. This is true, and that, that's what makes us uniquely different because it's, uh, it's not only inspired by the, uh, the spice that was founded by the Portuguese, which is, which is known as peri-peri. Uh, the French changed the spelling to peri-peri, and the Portuguese spell it P-E-L-I, and hence the name pali-pali. Huh. Yeah, so we use that uh, in practically everything that I cook with, but you wouldn't know, because it's a hot habanero pepper. One of the most popular dishes on the menu, the Cape Town skillet with scallops, calamari, mussels, and giant prawns. We have shrimp that are called prawns, and these come from South Africa. Those so are huge! They are, they're like, they're, they're like little mini lobsters, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so you can eat the legs, you can eat the You're inside. Kidding. Yes, oh yes. And what we do in the restaurant is we actually have the wait staff peel it for everybody. You so that, eat the legs? Yes, you can. That's Why? The, that's Plate it on a bed of rice with curry and cumin. It's kind of a South African version of paella. And that's how we serve that. And then the only other thing that I need to do is I'm going to add some chakalaka sauce to what? my chakalaka sauce. <laughs> okay, so let me tell you. No, no, wait, <laughs> let me tell you what chakalaka sauce is. Chakalaka is in Zulu when you say chaka it means to throw. Okay. And in Dutch when you say laka it means awesome. So when you say chakalaka like together, you're throwing awesomeness. Chakalaka. Yeah. I like that. So we're throwing some awesomeness onto those uh, muscles. Okay. He doesn't trust me. All right. Yeah, just bite them off. Oh, there you are. And then mm -hmm, mm, all the flavors Whoa. right there, isn't it? Isn't yes. that great? Oh my gosh. Yes. yes. Okay. So. Happy birthday. So whether you're celebrating something special or you just want a truly superb meal, Peli Peli offers everyone a whole lot of chakalaka. This has been amazing. I cannot wait to see what's next. The client to life. Cheers. Paul, you're one of a kind. Coming up, guys, are you ready to step up your game in your kitchen? We're taking you to culinary school, one of the best in the world that just happens to be in Texas. We're going to trim up this uh, belly. Where a one-day session can give your backyard barbecue a gourmet makeover. But next, brisket basics from a Texas roadside regular. Good things come from Cisco. It's smoking hot in here with some of South Texas' favorite barbecue. Mmm. Yeah, see, it's good. Nice flavor. Oh, it's so good. Beef brisket, crisp, juicy, and dripping with goodness. Melt in your mouth smoked poultry tangy sausage, and lip-smacking ribs, all slow-roasted to perfection right here at the original Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue in Leon Springs. Rudy's got its start as a one-stop gas garage and grocery store. Its original pitmaster, Doc Holliday, created barbecue so good, people from all over the world, even some celebrities, line up next to a gas station to get their share. NBA players, oh, tell me about some oh, of the yeah. big fans in the NBA. Oh, uh, like the Clippers, every time they come to town, we have to send food to them. Stacy says Tony Parker is a regular at Rudy's. He orders lean brisket, ribs, and even has a special request when it comes to his sausage. He likes his bite sizes like this, and that would be spread over the fire and let it cook a little bit longer. You do that for Tony Parker? Oh, we do it for anyone, but he requests oh. that every time he comes in. <laughs> Smart man. And it's not just celebrities. Rudy's takes care of veterans, too. I appreciate your services and all your sacrifices. I'm going to give you 10% recognition as a token of our appreciation. This really 
is a very historic spot, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. This is where it all started, right here since 1989. How long do you cook your brisket? Uh, anywhere from six to eight hours, depending on the size of it. And your temperature usually? Uh, we try to cook it no more than about three, 325 at the most. And I'm guessing yeah. it's the Rudy's Rub that's on there. Oh yeah, that's, that's all Rudy's Rub. They use Rudy's Rub on all their meats, but save the sauce for later. We don't cook any of our meat with the barbecue sauce, and I think the only thing we cook with barbecue sauce would be the chop. I gotcha. Yeah, Doc always said that uh, if you have to cook it with barbecue sauce, you're covering it up. So. Okay, I have a question about the sauce. You guys spell it with an S. Is yes. there some significance to that? Uh, it's just like we say with the words. It's just, okay, it's yeah, just the way it's just, it's just the way that Doc would say it, sauce. The brisket here comes in two parts, lean and moist. Uh, with brisket, you always want to cut it against the grain, because if you cut it with the grain, it becomes like chewy and makes it ah, seem tough. okay. This is that moist that you like there, so if you want to grab a little piece of that. You bet I do. You read my mind. So that just melts in your mouth. Mmm. Mm-hmm. That's one of you my favorite, You don't need too. sauce with that. Oh, yeah. Whoa. I come back here for the pork ribs and for the smoked turkey. Rudy's second bestseller is roasted turkey, smoked for two hours. The same goes for ribs, but here's a tip. A lot of barbecue places have cooked their ribs until it's fallen off the bones. And what that really does, is it kind of over makes it dry. So we mm -hmm. cook ours to where it easily comes off the bone. All right. So I didn't get to give that a try. Somebody's got to test the validity of that. Mmm. <laughs> yeah, see, it's good. Nice flavor. Oh, it's so good. Mm-hmm. You guys are all jealous, aren't you? <laughs> is there anything else you want, sir? And if you're not already craving Rudy's, check out their signature sides. Hearty potato salad, tangy beans, fixins, and of course, Rudy's world famous creamed corn. Seriously, this sweet creamy treat alone is worth the trip. Well, mm -hmm. this has been awesome. Rudy's original, the original Rudy's. I think that's important to note right here in Leon Springs where it all started. And I haven't had a frosty in years. This is Oh, fun. I know. Yeah. That's, Cheers. Hey, it's a great addition to a great barbecue. Absolutely. There's so much to like at Rudy's, but you know, one of the most popular dishes there is the creamed corn. Chefs from all over the country have tried to copy it. Rudy's guards the secret like you can't believe. Employees who work there have to sign a confidentiality agreement to never reveal the ingredients. Well, I gave it a shot in my kitchen and I think I came pretty darn close. It is so easy to make. I'm going to show you right now. To start, two big bags of frozen corn. I add two eight ounce Locks, I guess you would say, of cream cheese. Next, you're going to add a very generous cup of whole whipping cream. All that goodness goes right in. Then, about a teaspoon of salt. Next, a stick of butter. And there's really no order to this. I do like to get my cream on the corn so that sugar comes in contact with the corn. Next comes the sugar. About four to five tablespoons is what I put in mine, but honestly, I think Rudy's puts a lot more. So if you like it real super -y sweet, go six to eight, maybe even 10 tablespoons. Then you're gonna add a little pepper and you let it all start cooking down. The key to this dish is cook it low and slow. You could even do it in a crock pot. I've got all the recipe details for my version of Rudy's cream corn on goodtaste.tv. Other recipes there too. Coming up, cook like a chef. We'll take you inside one of the country's most respected cooking schools, and it's right here in Texas. We're saving you a seat at the CIA table. Next. Welcome back, everyone. You know, learning some new techniques, maybe it's flavor combinations or actually chef skills, can really take your cooking from so-so mm, to pretty spectacular. There's a cooking school in Texas. It's one of the best in the world that actually offers courses to everyday chefs like you and me. And it's up to you. You can learn a little or you can learn a lot. Cedar plank salmon. Grilled radicchio salad and Pakistani lamb burgers. Talk about upping your game at your next backyard barbecue. You can do it. When we portion the fish for typical grilling, I would have you cut it more on a bias. Every Saturday, wannabe chefs, or just food lovers in general, get to kickstart their kitchen skills inside the famed, the one and only, Culinary Institute of America Kitchens, the CIA. 
This one in San Antonio, one of only three CIA campuses in the country. Yeah, just squeeze those and then pop out the pit. Classes range from basic cooking and baking skills to healthy eating, all kinds of international flavors and exotic cuisines. We are in the awesome teaching kitchens here at the CIA, and I'm with my Cajun friend, Brandon, who knows all things culinary here at the Institute. So there are a variety of levels of classes you can take if you're interested in the, maybe if you're a novice or really if you want to pursue a professional career. Absolutely. This is a great way to, if you're interested in the field, if you're interested in the business, you might want to come and get a touch of kind of what we do. Okay, so everyone breaks into teams and these teaching kitchens are, each team has their own kitchen. You guys are team number two. two. Team number two. Today's topic, everyday grilling. You guys have your green onions here? So what is the task you guys were assigned today? We're doing spare ribs. Spare ribs. We're doing a, a sauce and now we're getting ready to do the salad that goes with it. So what skills are you learning that you didn't know about? Because when, I don't know about you guys, but I've learned a lot. When I grill at home, it's pretty basic and simple. You're kind of getting into some detailed stuff. Right. A grilling at home is a hot fire, a steak, and it's probably overcooked. We're a, <laughs> here we're doing sauces and uh, some other uh, nuances that make things a little bit more uh, as opposed to just the as opposed to just the basic backyard. Uh, you can assemble uh, 15 of these. You're making the dessert. Yes, uh, I'm making a fruit kebab. War veteran Michael Crawford survived an IED attack in Afghanistan. He's here wanting to improve and adapt his cooking skills. So what, in, what inspired you to take a class here? Uh, I've always liked cooking uh, from middle school on up. Um, then once I got hurt, I kind of fell out of it. And now that I'm getting a house that's modified for, uh, I guess, wheelchair life, uh, hoping to get back into it. <laughs> Top chefs from around the globe train at the CIA in New York, California, Singapore, and right here at the historic Pearl Brewery in San Antonio. Next door, full-time students get real-life experience at the CIA's award-winning restaurant now. Okay, I found, what is this, a cocoa nib and pepito? And pepita twill. So it's basically a little sugar crisp, mm -hmm. and it has uh, bitter it's cocoa nibs up. and pumpkin seeds, pepitas. It is delicious. Tell us about the food at now. We uh, do pan Latin cuisine, so we do everything from Chile to Mexico and everything in between. We like to put our own little twist on a lot of things. We start with really classic traditional preparations, ingredients, flavor profiles, yeah. and then we bring it into South Texas. Those chef skills, those insider tricks, are the same level of culinary expertise available to anyone who participates in the Saturday session. Are you learning anything? We've had a great time today. There's an awful lot of uh, knowledge that's been imparted, and then we get to do some hands-on yeah. skills, so it's been fun. Who's the better cook? He is. And by the looks of this colorful feast, everyone aced the final exam. Meet the latest graduates, awesome chefs in their own kitchen. Guys, a round of applause. That's amazing. Time now for one of my favorite finds every week. I'm going to share some of my wine finds with you. And this week we're going to talk about rosé. Now traditional rosé is not sweet. It's dry, crisp with minerality, hints of strawberries, sometimes cherries. And I brought some of my new finds right now for you to try. All of these wines are less than $20. Some quite a bit less. I'll give you the prices as well. Okay, we're going to start with the traditional style of rosé. It hails from one of the most beautiful places in the world. Provence, the south of France. This wine is very classic to what you would find if you were sitting in St. Tropez or somewhere fabulous on the beach and drinking rosé. Trien. It's dry, it's crisp, you're going to be getting a little bit of hint of fruit on the palate. Pairs beautifully with food. In fact, rosés of all kinds pair wonderfully with all different kinds of food. So whenever you're in doubt, pull a rosé out. Okay, moving on. This one is from Spain. This is from the Rioja region of Spain. This rosé is a bit fuller body than what you would find in France, and the fruit gets a little more intense, so it's a little more fruit forward, but it's not a sweet wine. And again, it's, it's a wonderful hot weather wine, springtime, 
afternoon on the porch. This is a Tempranillo. So Tempranillo is the grape from the Rioja region, fuller bodied. It's a really good rosé as well. All right, why not save what just may be the very best? Save them for last from Texas. Our favorite friends at Becker Vineyard make a beautiful rosé. In fact, the Provençal won double gold at the San Francisco Wine Competition. So this is not a wine to ignore. It's a combination of Syrah, Mouvedre, and Grenache, a very classic French style of rosé. It's absolutely beautiful, classic flavor, some minerality, strawberry, not a sweet wine, dry, crisp. I love this wine. So cheers to the Becker Vineyard folks for making an award-winning rosé. Ready for a relaxing weekend getaway? Coming up, we'll show you how you could win a weekend at the Houstonian. Details in just a minute. Who wouldn't love a getaway? An easy, relaxing vacay in your own backyard. Check this out. Head to Good Taste TV right now and sign up for a chance to win a luxurious weekend at the Houstonian, complete with spa treatments for you and a guest at the beautiful award-winning Trellis Spa. Remember, if you missed anything in today's show, you can always get it online at goodtaste.tv. That's where you'll find my recipe for that delicious Rudy's creamed corn, plus lots of other recipes too. Till next time, everyone, we're saving you a seat at the table. Cheers to good taste.